Rookie, left lane? Yep. Right lane. Camera. Ready. On your light. Whoa! That was a close one race. Right broke out. Son of a bitch, right dude. Right broke out. Cogging? What cogging? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Dorky Am 40 channel. I am Chad. Today, we are going to talk about some of your most asked questions, your Facebook DMs, all the comments and stuff like that. And we're just going to get right to it. You saw that rip right there. If you didn't see the how to win video where I tore through the last couple weeks of bracket racing, Go back and watch it, watch my runs. I'll show you a couple of them here. We're gonna just start off and say, look, there's no cogging with the castle if you run it correctly. I know because, well, I just don't have any cogging. Maybe it's because I've been running that the entire time, the castle cat pack, the 8S that's designed for it. Now, I think this whole thing started when Mark Vine came on the TSR podcast and said that he had some cogging. I don't know if he used a cap pack or not. Maybe he assumed, like a lot of you assumed, that the caps inside of the ESC are enough, like they were in the RX-8. Maybe the RX-8s would run better if we ran cap packs on them. I'm not 100% sure. I never tried that. There's a lot of things that can go into this cogging type of uh, discussion. Most of it's going to be control input, the signals that are getting in there, electrical feedback, all that kind of stuff. People think caps basically just help regulate voltage and all that good stuff. But really what the capacitors do is they smooth out all of the EMF feedback, ripple voltage, all that kind of stuff. So your electronics can just run better. There's really nothing special about this Castle Cat Pack. All it is is just four uh, capacitors wired in series. I don't know what the voltage is on them. I'm gonna assume that they are either 415 volts wired in series or they are 435 volts wired in parallel to me it looks like they're wired in series though i'm not 100 percent sure don't can't really tell that from the board but you know this thing is made for bashing our castle escs the bomb max 8s you know it's made for speed running and escs and if you watch any of the speed run video guys i mean they literally kick their cars to like get them to go because of how they're geared so yeah there is cogging when it comes to stuff like that now for our application you are going to need something like this if you're not running any type of cat pack at all you don't really need this castle one anything will be will work um you know if you have one from your drk even though i wouldn't recommend that i run this one on my drk and everything else any kind of a large capacitor uh, cat pack is gonna work and help smooth everything out no cogging no problems quit i don't know quit listening to internet shows and stuff like that and look at just a normal guy getting real world results here so we'll put that one to rest and now let's get on to the next question do i really need to buy a sanwa or is there something that's better or just as good a lot of people asking questions about different settings that are inside futabas spectrums and everything else and i mean i'll be 100 percent honest guys i can only speak for what i actually use which is the sanwa and i see all of the good fast people using the sand wall. Now that I understand it and how it works and how to tune it and everything else, I have looked at some other radios and I've seen some other people doing things on some videos. I mean, nothing compares. And I, I just, you know, the argument is just kind of, it's a weak argument. And I wish I had more data to throw at people as far as like being able to log the protocol the frame rate and everything else like that to kind of show you what is going on on the backside that makes the sand why even better than just having all these fancy little things to do now just because you can control throttle with the two the steering is the key. I have not flipped or rolled a car once since I got the sand why if you want to know how to do that look at my going straighter video i'll put a link to that up here and in the description and you'll see how i do the r mode tuning 
with steering just like we do with the throttle and it works fantastic now to talk about frame rate and protocol and all that kind of stuff i've got my tbs mambo here this is what i use to fly my fpv drones with and in the back it has the tbs crossfire module so the mambo itself runs a highly developed they're constantly doing development in the fpv community it's not you get firmware updates like every couple weeks sometimes not like once or twice a year with our rc stuff and the reason why is these things have to be fast and super precise in order to control the fpv quads and everything that we're flying because they are so fast you don't want any latency and you want perfect frame rates every time now this has an internal module that runs a proprietary 2.4 protocol just like your sandwad does this module in the back actually is a 900 megahertz module that has its own protocol that runs now this module talks to this radio through its own software and protocol so you can see how all this stuff just has to work together in beautiful harmony or you can have a lot of issues it's the reason why logging with FPV stuff is so important. And maybe one of these days our drag cars will get there because then I think a lot of people are gonna be able to see how important a smooth, consistent frame time delivery is in order to get in great throttle performance, even in two seconds. If you wanna learn more about this stuff, I'm gonna put a link to a video in the description below from Mark Spatz, UAV Tech. And he's gonna show you just how inconsistent various different radios can be. You know, when you think you're giving throttle or turning a car or a drone left or right, there's so much more that goes on underneath the hood. He's got all this stuff all logged out and mapped and stuff because it's what he does. He's a, uh, one of the Betaflight developers and Betaflight is one of the firmwares that we run on our flight controllers to fly our FBB drones. It's probably gonna be way above what we need to know, but just being able to see the difference between the manufacturer's protocols is going to be enough. And you're gonna see that some of the more expensive radios have the more consistent and better frame times, packet deliveries, all that kind of stuff. And the cheaper ones, I'm sorry to say, they just do not compete. I would love to buy and try a couple different radios for you guys, like maybe like the Noble or something like that, to see if there is a cheaper alternative, but it's just not worth the money. Um, you know, I think the buy once, cry once solution really comes into when you're talking about things like the Sanwa and the Castle. You know, this is stuff that you're gonna have for a long time. I really, I am really convinced with all the things that are going on in the world, supply chain issues and everything like that, that we're not going to see a huge leap in ESC technology for probably until the middle to the end of next year. I could be wrong. I know people are working on stuff right now, but being able to get that, develop it, produce it, test it is almost next to impossible right now just because of everything that's going on out in the world. I, there are we haven't even got firmware updates. So what makes you think that all of a sudden we're gonna get an amazing ESC? Luckily the Castle Mamba Monster 8S was already through all those steps and they were able to drop it and launch it. It's their latest ESC that they have. The thing's fantastic. I don't think many people are in disagreement that it's an awesome ESC to run. They just gotta get over these misconceptions of cogging and all that stuff. But anyway, let's get on to OG Bo. You had some kind of slippage there, buddy. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go back. That spin or whatever happened, that didn't help you. So. Did you boost it up? So my, all my timing was getting dumped in at 64K. The other one, all my timing. So here's what happened. I changed it. the first run I did, 213. I had my timing going from 6,800 to 75,000. I only made 73,000 RPMs, so I didn't. So I didn't. So I didn't hit all 45 degrees. Royal, right? So then I changed it, 
down to 6600 to 5340 so it squeezed all that all, in. all that in and let in 10,000 less rpms yeah. so yeah let it pull all the way and then just finish it off with your gearing so i'm going to move it back to where it was i think it was like 75,000 so that way it's going to well, be and if you think you want the rpm just take it down a tooth or up 200 per yeah that'll be good enough for tonight yeah bracket right so as long as you're consistent well i'm not doing any custom curve i'm just ramping at 96 and 25 that's it running a 2-1 or, or you could leave it like that and ramp it at 97 negative 97. yeah that's a long ramp that's nah, still I'm gonna hook it back up to the castle. What I'm talking about was tuning the RPM band of my castle. Now you can do the same thing with your RX-8. You pick an end time, you pick a start time. And ideally you want your timing to go throughout the entire run. Now, if you're looking to just really push and throttle your ET, like I did a few weeks ago, you can compress that and you can apply as much of that timing as the algorithm will allow in a shorter RPM span. Therefore, you're just powering through. And if your car will take it, then that's good. But optimally, you want a nice gradual increase. It's better on your voltage, better on your car, smoother's faster. I ran two ones all last week after I extended my RPM range of timing to actually end or be close to the end of the total rpms my car was making so i've said it again you've got to make runs you got to get logs you got to get your gearing right you got to see what your car is doing then you can dial this stuff in this goes for tegan and this goes for the castle as well any other rpm based timing system this is not like the drk where you set up stages and then you bring in your timing at a certain slew rate we'll get to that next so yeah the car slipped you see the logs i made the change and the car performed again logs doing what we needed to do to make the car go consistent and faster. Now the question that comes up a lot, do I still recommend the DRK since I've had so much success with the castle? Question, uh, the answer is absolutely, especially if you don't have one of the higher end radios. You know, the great thing about the DRK is it allows you to tune all that kind of stuff. I mean, it, I said it in my DRK video, it's the only software that is specifically made for our specific application. Is it 100% perfect? No. Do we know that they're working on other stuff and other versions of the firmware? Yeah, we all know that now. They've said it a million times that they are. I still think it's the easiest and fastest way to have the most success possible. Once you just put in the custom tunes that they have already built and you're good to go. Now you can then take it to the next level. I did 100% on all stages threw in the timing, played with the ramping on the San Juan, and ran my fastest ET on the DRK ever, just figuring it out myself. So yes, I definitely recommend the DRK. I definitely recommend that you also replace the cat pack on the DRK. Their older ones seem to be a lot more reliable. The new ones, I've seen a lot of people popping those left and right. Again, any type of really good capacitor pack, castle, flash packs anything like that is you just throw it in there in line with your esc and your battery and you're going to see some kind of advantage it's not going to make you go faster but it just is good to know that it's inside there and it's going to help your car perform optimally why don't i go to big races well i'm just not a big traveler i don't really like to get away that much i just think it's uh especially the just you know, been really wore out lately just with work and everything like that. You know, working at a hospital during a pandemic is not fun at all. And uh, just uh, the extra amount of stress and everything like that. I pretty much just saw uh, been luckily this weekend it rained on Sunday, so I didn't have to go racing. And, uh, you know, we just got to basically relax and sleep and stuff like that. 
it's nice when you're with some really fast people. So that way you got a pretty good judge of like where you're at and what you're doing. I think Bo finished like in the top 20 at Kentucky this weekend. So that was pretty solid. And he got knocked out, I think, by Frank uh, Ulbrich's wife or whatever. So, you know, that hats off to him for going that far and doing that great. What am I going to do this winter? Well, that's interesting that a couple of people have actually asked that. The buggies were setting up there. I've been playing with them and actually kind of getting things dialed in and doing a lot of updates to the C Mini B that you haven't seen yet. But I'll be releasing a video about my winter plans here coming up probably this week, I would say. Also got the HD FPV uh, TRX4 crawler and I've got an even better HD camera for it for nighttime FPV now, so I can just cruise all over my properties and stuff like that. It's one of my better performing videos on YouTube if you wanna see the ultimate FPV experience. And uh, you know, if you have uh, if you are in the winter like me and you own a crawler, it's definitely a good thing to think about uh, to help pass the time during the winter time. And uh, now that we can do digital DJI FPV, it's nice. So I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. We just covered like the main big topics that everybody is asking about. Let me know if you have any more questions. We'll do another follow-up session like this. I don't know, maybe monthly or something like that. Um, I've been all over the forums and stuff, looking at new stuff, still trying to get uh, some things to test before the end of the season. So that's going to do it, guys. Thanks a lot for everything. Really appreciate it. Peace.